Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our ETP Speech Night. We are the hosts of today, Talks on the Soapbox. I'm Anne. And I'm Elena. And two of us will be in charge of the first session with you guys. I'm Jeff. And I'm Claire. And the two of us will be here with you in the next session after the break. Okay, so before the talk start, you guys might be wondering why Talks on the Soapbox. Does it sound a little bit weird? Yeah, why not talk on a milk box or a beer box? Well, you know, actually, the soapbox is originally a rest platform on which one stands to make their speech. So that's why. So you mean anyone who stands on the soapbox can share their ideas? Yeah, exactly. So today we are very glad to invite 10 professional teams to get on their soapbox and share their ideas with us. Remember, change your thoughts and you change your world. And today, I, I know we have some special guests, right? Yeah, so first of all, we would like to invite uh, very, uh, a Professor Cho, <laughs> who has supported Ely for a long time, and thanks for coming from far, far away. And would you like to give us some speech <laughs> for Dr. Let's give her a quick. Well, first of all, I need my soapbox. Okay? If I don't have a soapbox, I'm not supposed to say anything tonight. Is that right? Okay. So I'm going to keep it very short. Thank you for inviting me here, and thank you for giving me the chance to share um, your wonderful experience or your presentation with, with me. Um, I really appreciate that. Uh, I'm here as an attendee, not a presenter. So I plan to sit down and shut up and enjoy for the rest of the night, if that is okay with you. Thank you. Well, it says we have 10 teams, right, to share the topics. So I'm really looking for it. So, you know, it's about the end of the semester. And it's also the end of the world to us. I have piles of books to do, reports, exams, presentations, and ETP presentations. ETP presentations? Tell me about that. Actually, I think I'm under so many pressure as well, and I think I'm going to lose myself. What am I supposed to do? Yeah, but why not we go traveling during the winter vacation? Traveling? But, but where? You see, I, I have no money. No worries. We have a very professional team to show us how to travel with low budget. Wow, that's really exciting. Low budget. So let's give it up to the first talk. Low budget traveling in Europe. Second, accommodation. Third, entertainment. And our company's information sources are from official websites, traveling books, and last but not the least, personal experience. And that's me. So feel free to call me anytime in your traveling. Next, Yvonne will tell you more about transportation part. First, we would like to focus on some two forms of transportation in Europe. Um, according to the book, if you want to save the money, you can book the ticket as early as possible, um, roughly two to three months before you go. Here we will take German subway DB Bahn, for example. If you want to book the tickets for two days after today, it will cost us 102 euro dollars per person. 
However, if we book the tickets for three months after today, it will only cost us 29 euro dollars per person. Here, you can obviously find that we can save more than 30% of money if we book the ticket as early as possible. Next, according to the book, Subway is the cheapest way um, to travel around Europe. Uh, moreover, if you, if you are planning to travel to more than two countries, you can buy a ticket set called Europe Railway Pass, which allows you unlimited travel between the countries you plan to visit, and it's much cheaper than buying tickets separately. Next, if you want to save, uh, save the money, bike would be your best choice. According to the book, bike spread almost bike weight spread almost everywhere in Europe, and it's much cheaper, more convenient, and more eco-friendly than other automobiles. Um, if you're planning a short distance trip, bike would be your best choice. Now, we have introduced you to some cheap forms of transportation, but after a long, tiring day, where can you find a place to take a rest? So, now let's move on to accommodation. We divide them into two parts. One is called surfing and another is hostel. So, what is house surfing? Actually, house surfing is that you move from one friend's house to another's and sleep in spare space which is available. So, the first step is to log in the official website and then choose the place you want to go and then choose one man who you are interested in. If you are very satisfied with him, you can browse the basic information uh, and then take references about the before comments. <coughs> if there are any negative comments, you have to be careful because it means some bad things happen, such as discrimination, bad habits, sexual harassment, or something else. Okay, so the above are house serving. And then let's move on to hostel. So what is hostel? Uh, Hostel means that you rent a room from hostel and share the space with others. Due to the sharing, the cost could be reduced. So, after the brief introduction, we summarize the budget. On couch surfing, is zero. How amazing it is! Wow! <laughs> On hostel, it takes 10 day trip in Europe, for example, it only costs you 190 euros in 10 days. Don't you think both ways are cheap? So, due to the trans transportation, you are exhausted. However, after the sleeping, you are full of energy and long to do anything you want. So, let's move on to entertainment part. How to save your money in the entertainment part? There are three things you must need to know. The, fir the first one is the international student ID card. It can help save, save lots of money. So, you must want to know who can get ISIC and what can ISIC do for me. Any full-time students over 12 years old can apply for an ISIC card. And it offers some public translation or a cinema or a museum ticket discount. As for the activities, the museum in France is free on the first Sunday of each month from November to March. And the carnival in Germany is open on November 11th at 11, 11 a.m. And the most interesting thing when you are traveling is buying souvenirs. But if you don't want to spend lots of money, flea market is your best choice. Here are top three flea markets in Europe. The first one is in Waterloo, Belgium. The vendors are located orderly, so it's easy to find a particular vendor. And the, first, uh, the second one is in Lille, France. It's the biggest flea market in France, but sadly, it, open, it only takes place uh, once a year. And the third one is in Berlin, Germany. It offers everything for the young family and students around the area, so the price is low. After hearing lots of things, do you want to travel in Europe? Let's review what we just talked about. After hearing 
ever speak to you or know how to lower your budget by three ways, which are transportation, accommodation, and entertainment. Now we're going to enhance our credibility through this budget chart, uh, and the information was provided by Shoshu Travel Agent, and we customized it into the low budget version. Now let's take a look at the first column. It shows that the trip traveled around four countries. However, it passed reversely through the uh, same one, which cost much more money. And the next column shows that uh, it is a hotel chosen to be stay in the trip, and which cost fifty-four thousand and dollars. And the third column shows uh, the trip also visited to the Palace of Versailles, which cost uh, three thousand and dollars. And if we we got the I six student ID card, we can get twenty percent discount. So all the evidence proves that low budget traveling is the best way to travel in Europe. Now what are you still waiting for? Let's go to Europe now! Yay! <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, thanks for all the team. So do you have any questions? To ask them? Yeah. <laughs> okay, I want to ask that uh, for the character thing, do we need to provide our uh, house or coach to exchange or we just go on a date to search for someone and we can live there? Um, as for my experience, I've, in, uh, I've been to Germany. And uh, for the couch serving part, I just went there. Uh, of course, before I went there, I chat with the uh, with the girl on Facebook to ask her if it's okay, and she said, "And it's okay, so you can just go there, and it's for free, so you don't have to exchange anything." But of course, if you want to have more sources about this, you have to sign into the page, so that uh, if uh, next time uh, when you want to go to another country to have a couch serving. It will be more convenient for you, but uh, exchanging is not necessary. So, do anyone has a question? So, seems not. We thanks for the team, and let's move on to the next topic. So, let's give them a big. Uh, some robots and other information online. 
and what's more, we have done a survey among 300 students in the college, college of Commerce and found out that almost 95% of students love pasta. So you may ask us, does it important to me? Yes, we do think so. Why? For your relationship. You may confuse about, about that. Well, let me tell you. Think of this. Think of this. If you are not, even if you are not a pasta lover, your boyfriend or girlfriend might be a pasta money, right? And so we think they will love you more if you know more about the food they like, right? Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I will surely introduce. We will inform you several things today. Uh, first, we will talk about uh, the history of pasta, and next. And next on, we'll talk, this, talk about the soul of pasta, the pasta sauce, and another soul of pasta, the pasta noodles. And finally, we'll give you a short conclusion. Okay, can't wait to start. Let's welcome our first chef, Belle. Hey, good evening. By introducing the history, first I'm going to introduce some, some of the uh, words to you. The word pasta in Italian means doll. And pasta fresca means the freshly made pasta which can be cooked right after it was made. And pasta secca is the dry pasta which we often buy in the supermarket. And uh, let's look at the pasta map. Pasta was first brought from China to Italy by Marco Polo. And it was later largely produced in the southern Italy because of the invention of noodle making machine and because of the dry weather. And let's look at the, uh, we also say that pasta is the national spirit of Italy. And why? That's because Mussolini, who is the leader of the fascists in Italy, he says that, I united Italy because I united those who not do and those who don't. And he also says that, I committed every soldier with a plate of hot pasta before going to the war. So who do you think that united Italy together? Is it Garibaldi that we all learn on the history textbook? Well, we don't think so. We think it's a plate of hot pasta that united Italy together. And now let's welcome the next chef to introduce the soul of pasta to you, the sauce. Okay, I actually did it on purpose, just that to make you awake. <laughs> Great. Okay, so thank you, Belle, for giving us a brief introduction about pasta history. And now I'm going to talk about one of the most important elements in pasta, which is the sauce. A good sauce will enhance the pasta flavor without overpowering it. And the traditional pasta sauces can be divided into four groups, which are marinara, alfredo, pesto, and some other alcohol-based. Let's take a look at the first type, marinara. Marinara is uh, a basic and simple red sauce, mainly made from uh, tomatoes. And uh, fresh tomatoes are uh, ideal, but if you cannot find a fresh one, you can also use canned or peeled ones instead. And in Italian, it is literally translated into uh, apple of gold, which means uh, tomatoes in Italian cuisine is also always served as really important and precious kind of fruit. And the second type is a rich creamy sauce called alfredo. And the main ingredients in alfredo sauce is the parmesan cheese, as you can see here. But in Taiwan, we usually use the powder instead because we cannot find the real ones. And where can you find the real parmesan cheese? Only in north, northern Italy, because the rangers there insist on only use the milk taken from um, those cows that are fed on um, like fresh grass, which makes the parmesan cheese tastes really grassy, sweety, and nutty. And the third type is pesto. And the main ingredients in pesto is this kind of uh, plant, basil. And in Taiwan, we have something really familiar, uh, similar, uh, pa. Well, they are well, kind of brothers, something. Okay, and okay, it's also served as a symbol of love in Italian. The last type is alcohol-based. And in Italian cuisine, they use Marsala wine or <clears throat> Madeira wine. But usually, um, these, these wines are usually serve us only for drinking, but it's also very common in Italian cuisine. And it's originated from Portugal. Okay, so later on we're moving on to the most important thing in pasta, which are um, noodles themselves. Let's welcome the next chef, Shelly. Okay, so now it's time for noodles of pasta. 
And first, I want to ask you a question. Do you know how many kinds of noodles are there actually? 100 kinds? 200 kinds? <laughs> no, it's even more. According to the books we read, some people say that it's more than 500 kinds, and some people say it's even more than 2,000 kinds. However, one thing is for sure. If you eat pasta for every day, every meal, for the whole year, you still won't try the same kind. So the pasta actually can be divided into four categories. Long, short, bird, and stuff. About the long pasta, uh, the new, uh, it's something that we are familiar with, like spaghetti, it's long and thin. And also some kind are with hard or even flat. And the shirt one is very diversity and colorful, like some kind I look like butterflies or look like shell. And the blue one is the one that you can really feel the chewy taste of noodles. The last one is that one. It's a little bit like Chinese dumpling, and we always put cheese or maybe vegetables meat inside. So why are there so many kinds of noodles? You might out and you might doubt say, like, do I really need? The answer is yes, absolutely. Because actually, different category you should use different way to cook it or even add with different sauce. Like um, the long pasta, you should add with some sauce that is not so healthy flavored. And the next one, uh, the short one, you should add with some creamy sauce or back in with cheese. And the broad one, you should add with some healthy flavored sauce. The last one, stuffed one, you should cook it with soup or maybe add with this kind of these two sauce that we have already mentioned. So now let's welcome our last show, Vincent. For the conclusion part, all in all, we have mentioned three main parts of our pasta. First, the history. Second, the sauce. Last but not least, the noodle. Now you know which sauce and noodles can be the best counterpart. Next time when you go to an Italian restaurant, choose the best pasta to enjoy. Thank you, all the team. So it's QA time again. Do you have any questions regarding pasta? Just feel free to ask them. Any questions? Uh, it doesn't. You don't necessarily have to do that, but it's like su as a su suggestion because for short noodles, it will kind of how do you say? Uh, it will mix with the creamy sauce better than those long ones. Yeah. It, is, is that okay with you? Is it based on your personal preference, or is it actually based on? Oh, it's ba based on the tr uh, Italian tradition. But actually, in, nowadays in Taiwan, most of the restaurant, uh, you can ask them to change the noodles as you want. So, so is there any questions? Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It was Christmas Eve. 
when a beautiful girl Rebecca took a plane to England to have fun. However, on the way, she encountered a plane crash. <laughs> And when she woke up again, she found that everyone else except her was dead. Yes, today we are going to introduce you several ways that can help you save your life in the web. In the future, you guys may become a successful businessman, businesswoman that you need to travel around the world, or you may need to take your family to a mountain hiking. During these activities, you never know when accidents will happen. So, even if you've got a very important exam tomorrow, we still strongly suggest that you listen to us carefully. We've read dozens of credible reference and by our knowledge and experience in life, that we conclude three main points. First, we'll teach you how to find out your direction in the wild that can help you to get out. Second, we we'll teach you how to make drinkable water that you won't be thirsty to death in the wild. And finally, we will teach you how to deal with some special emergency situations. Now, let's welcome Jenna to help you uh, find out your direction in the web. Thank you. Okay. Once you find, once you find yourself stuck in a while, the most important thing is to find find out your position because it's very dangerous and awful if you don't know your direction even if you have the map. So here I'm teaching you the simple way to find out the direction. First, set a straight rock on the ground and put a small point on the shadow. Then, wait for 10 to 16 minutes and the shadow will move to another direction. Put another stone on the point of the shadow. Lastly, Draw a line between the two points, and the two points will be the east and the west, and the vertical direction will be the north and the south. Now, now you find out the direction, you may be very thirsty, so let's go find some water. Okay, it is very important to find some water in the wild because you may be able to live or, uh, without food for weeks. However, a person has no water could be expected to die within days. Uh, and, and if one day when you start in the wild, stuck in the wild, the water you find, find may not be clean enough to drink. So I'm going to teach you some simple ways to make a water filter by yourself. And the first thing you have to do is to get two containers. One is for the dirty water and the other is for the clean water. And then is to poke some holes on the bottom of the containers. And the holes should be smaller than the materials you are going to put in. And next is to find some filtering materials. And the filtering materials could be very depends on the environment you are stuck in. And the good materials could be like sand, grass, or marbles, or even the charcoal from a campfire is also very good materials. And next, you just have to locate those materials uh, in order. And as just as you, you can see, because we want to filter out the larger pieces out first, and then increasingly the smaller piece, the smaller ones. So we're going to put the smaller materials just like sand at the bottom, and then larger and larger. And then here comes the last step. We just have to pour some your dirty water through the in the bottom containers and let it go through the containers and the water will be cleaner. And I suggest you to do this over then three times to make your water cleaner. So now you know how to find a direction and then you know how to make a water filter by yourself. And next we are going to teach you some uh, skills to when you make some make, make some emergency when you're stuck in the wild. Okay, jungles, deserts, and wilderness. No one will know where will you be if you got stuck in the wild. Okay, so I'm now going to teach you some uh, how to deal with some uh, different kinds of special situations. First, uh, it's very important for you if you got uh, stuck stuck in the wild. The weather will be very important for you. Why? Because the thunder might kill you. Okay. If uh, if it's raining, then I suggest you better stay away from the trees because the thunder is tend to hit the toilet things. And uh, if you got cars, then congratulations because staying in the car is very safe for you. 
But remember, do not stay beside the car, but stay inside the car. Or you can find a very safe cave to hide in. It's a very good choice. And after you walk for a long time under the sun, you might feel very dizzy. Then you might get sunstroke. Then this time you can try to lie down, put your things, maybe your, your bag, under your head. Then this could help your blood flow to your feet because your head don't need that much blood. And if you feel very tired, you can put your bag under your feet. Okay, this can help your blood flow to uh, the part of your body that need it most. Then, uh, uh, what would you do if you uh, face some face some fierce wild animals like bears? Remember, guys, do not climb on the trees. Do not climb on the trees because bears climb climbs too. Okay, okay. Um, what are you going to do if you face some face some bear? Um, because the the foreleg, the hands of the back is shorter than his leg, so you can run downhill. It's much difficult for bears to run downhill than uphills. Okay, and maybe you can prepare a Y-shaped stick like this. Actually, it's not very difficult to find. I find this today in in Zhongshan dormitory. I don't know why this <laughs> appear in that dormitory, no, but I just found it. Okay, it's very easy to find, and you can chop chop it. As a Y shape, use your ox or a knife, something, and you can press the, the head of a snake, press his head. And if you ask me, what am I going to do if I face some snake bigger than my stick, then I would suggest just run as fast as you can, okay? Let's welcome our conclusion. Yeah, now I'm survived. In the past few, in the past few minutes, I have learned so many skills. At the, at the first, and I learned how to point out the direction, and the second, I know how to find the water, and at the last, I know how to how to deal with the emergency. Once I get the following skills, then I don't have to die. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so thanks for your talk. So now let's move on to the Q&A session. Everyone please feel free to pose any questions. Well, actually I'm going to talk about any question, but just a few quick comments. And uh, first of all, I think the opening is really eye-catching. And content is really, you know, well organized. And well, I personally do enjoy your presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Does anyone have any question? No. Okay. So thank you for our team. Let's give them a big class. We have survived. Hooray. Hooray. Life is so amazing. Yeah, and we just celebrate. Let's sing and dance and shake your body. Music, give me some beats. <laughs> so let's give it all to the next song, Beat Your Life. juvenile percussion ensemble for 14 years. She provided us many sources 
to be familiar with percussion. And next, in the next session, first we will tell you the history and definition of percussion. Then, next is the we will introduce two famous groups of percussion, and at the end, we will have you play percussion by yourself. Experience the magic of percussion. And now, you may want to know what percussion is. Percussion is composed of percussion instruments, and they're sounded by being struck or scratched by hands or beater. According to the book, Be the New Era, People have played percussion instruments since the Stone Age. Therefore, there are a lot of percussion instruments in the world. And now, I'm going to show you some percussion instruments. The first one, and also the most well-known one, the drum set. And this one is often used in pop songs, home. And this one is from Africa, the song piano. And see also, triangle xylophone, fungus, and all this. A percussion instrument includes the garbage can. Now you know what percussion is. Later on, Jeff and Sally will tell you who use these percussion instruments to create masterpieces. Now I'm going to introduce you to percussion groups. But it's important because is the first one and the most famous percussion groups in Taiwan. And the original groups formed by Jim has 13 percussionists and one composer in it. After years of efforts, they become speakers. Now, the new groups, two percussion groups, two, has 13 and has many new members in it and they are all Jew students. Also, let's do a sub groups called Jieyou percussion groups that are played by young percussionists like high school students. And the most important person, of course, is him, Zhu Zhongqi, the founder and artist director in Zhu percussion groups. And he's really a master of learning percussion in Vienna from this person. And he is also the first Chinese who received the diploma of percussion. And now we are going to see how good they are. <laughs> After knowing the outstanding group in Taiwan, now I'm going to introduce a famous foreign group called Percosa. And we introduce them because that it represents percussion can be created from single thing of everyone. So now let's watch your video first. Interesting, right? Because that is a group from Netherlands, and there are four group members. Uh, according to the group Drumming Up in the New Era, at the beginning they did music in the streets of southern France and tried to captivate passersby's attention. And since 1990s, they gradually took their performance on the stage and create more and more music. They're always energetic as well as creative, and they always bring some surprises to their audience. And for example, uh, they combine some instruments with drama or dance, and also they turn something in your life to the music, such as buckets, eggs, or even their own bodies. You can see these pictures that they use shoes and some tubes to make some temples, just like we see in the video. So, Prakosa tell us that precaution is everywhere and we can try it ourselves. Okay, you have to know more about what is precaution and also two famous precaution groups. Now it's time to try it yourself. I will divide you into four groups. The first group, and the second group, the third group, and the fourth group. For the first group, I want you to use your hand and your tempo is 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Very good. And the second group, you have to use your feet and your tempo is 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Do it together. 1, 2, 3, 4. Very good. And the third group, you have to use your mouth 
And your tempo is one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Very good. And the fourth group, you have to use your tongue. And your tempo is one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Very good. Now I want you to do your own tempo and four group, four groups at the same time. I will count to four and then start. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Speed up. One, two, three, four. 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 Very good. Give it up. Percussion, but you also have tried it. Those are simple tempos that we use to let you experience what is percussion, and we hope it will help you release some pressure. But why we didn't provide you with percussion instrument? It's because we want to let you not only uh, clap your hands or stamp your feet are also the way to do percussion performances. Now we have another surprise for you. Let's watch what you have just learned today. Your own irrational consumer behavior. 
And the second one, we will clarify what is the Koi effect is. And at last, we will show you what is zero price effect. And now, let's welcome Tony to show you the first simple experiment. Okay, uh, I'm a salesman of vaccine, and this is our company's uh, subscription plan. And as you can see, that we have three options. And you can choose the option A, and it's the internet version, and the option B is the vaccine version. And also our option C, you can have both the internet version and the vaccine at a very good price. So can everybody now take a very quick decision uh, at which one would you like to choose? Okay. And I believe that, uh, well, I guess that, that many of you will think that option C is sounds like a good idea, right? So, but now if we, if we take the, if we <coughs> make another decision, but this time we remove the option B, and now look at it and we choose again. So which one would you like to choose? Is the internet version, or you would choose, still choose the option C? Do you want to look again? <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is case A, and this is case B. So this time, which one would you like to choose? A, 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 A. Yes, and I believe that, uh, no, I know that, you guys think that option C does not look that attractive to you now. And in the real case experiment, that 84 people in 100, that they choose option C. but. Once the researcher canceled the option B, that it turns out that less people choose option C and more people choose option A. And how to explain this? That's how James to tell us about the decoy effect. <coughs> okay, and we can see that uh, this is this inferior option make the other one superior. You might think this inferior option is useless, but it helps people to figure out what they want, and guess what, and that's what a salesperson wants to sell. So let's look at, and Apple also used this effect in their new product, iPhone 5. So if there were only two options, this option's offer is cheap price, but this offer is large storage. But now the customers start confusing, which should I choose? Is this the real bargain? So. In fact, they offer the third options, and we're paying the same 100 bucks more. And if this option offers double storage, and that will definitely lure people to buy it. So to sum up, how we make decisions, uh, it's hard for us to know the exact value of one thing. But if you, if it is much more easier if you offer something to compare to help people to make decisions. So next, the welcome Jeff to introduce your price effect. Okay, after experience the decoy effect and the magazine subscription experiment, let's talk about the zero price effect. When we say zero in price, we may it means that the concept of free. And if we know something is free, we may rush to get this free stuff. However, free is not necessarily the better choice. Let's take a look. In the book, Pretty Boy Original, it lets the people to choose the chocolate. In the original price, in the original price, people tend to choose the truffle chocolate, and it has a higher preference, about 73%. However, if I did a little change, just reduce the price both one cent, reduce both one cent, and the kiss chocolate turns to be zero in price, right? So it dramatically changed the, drum, the preference. The kiss has the 69 preference. You see, the free stuff is really attractive. And next example is about uh, the 7 Eleven holds an activity in the 2005, and if you spend $77 in seven, then you can have this. Here, uh, uh, cute Hello Kitty magnet for free. However, according to the 7 Eleven survey, usually people tend to uh, spend $66 in seven. So actually, you spend 11 more money on this magnet. And that's why 7 Eleven sells rest in this period. 
So people tend to spend more money on free stock and not mind the cost effective. So we usually pay too much for paying nothing, and that's the little price effect. Next is our conclusion. After our introduction, you you learned about the decoy effect, the zero price effect, and you also did an experiment which helped you to learn more about the, your irrational consumer choices. So now you are different from yourself eight minutes ago. <laughs> and to realize the irrational consumer behavior will definitely help you to make a better decision in the future. So next time you will never did a wrong decision anymore. Thank you for your listening. So everyone, please feel free to ask questions. How to be like a rational consumer or something like that. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I have a question. Well, so <laughs> what do you what do you guys think about the same coffee? Like you can buy one and another one just have a price just like twenty five percent off. What do you think? Is this it is um worthwhile to do this? Fag wants to know if you really need this. If you just think it's cheap so you will get another one, then it may not be a good deal. But if you have a real need or you can buy from your friends, so it seems a good deal. Okay, thank you. Okay. <laughs> so do anyone has questions? So do you know how to become a really rational consumer? Because sometimes even if you are irrational, but you are you don't know that you are being cheated by yourself and by the product as well. So do you know the exactly way to be a really rational consumer? Mm, uh, the economic books also every time tell us people are rational. No, people are not rational. <laughs> so the. We must pr practice, you, rational must be practiced, and you, you ha must have the idea now and you have to always remind yourself, uh, is this, uh, is this cause effect? No, it's tail effect? No. <laughs> Something like that. And you, it, I want to say you have to remind yourself very often and to make sure that you are doing the right decision or you can make a discussion with your friends. So, do anyone has any questions? Okay, please. Well, you say that uh, it's hard to know the real price, the real value of something. And instead, we usually get confused when they got some uh, free gifts or you got 10 more bucks, you got one more thing. And so, how should we, we learn to, uh, do you have any suggestion or thing that tell us to learn? To know something's real value, like uh, you can read uh, advertisement more to get to know the price of things or something that you get uh, advice. My only suggestion is you have to look for more things before you make the decisions. As before, uh, you can, uh, it's you. It's hard to know uh, one like the television. You want to buy a television. Uh, and you, it's hard to know the exact value of television of 36 inch and so what. But you can have you can check uh, different brands or something like that, then, and then you can make sure that is the best your best choice. Okay, thank you. Do you want to add some more? <laughs> do you do? Yeah, just one second. Just put your no, just close your eyes and put your hands in your pockets and wet your wallet is. It's, uh, it's, it's really heavy, it's really heavy that like, just, just buy it. <laughs> and it's really all thing that you should stop and think twice. Okay, thank you for the questions and thank you for our team. Alright, I have to admit that sometimes I also make some wrong decisions. 
Yeah, but still, we get lots of informative ideas from the talks we listen to. But I still have some problem which bother me. Hmm, really? Like what? Tell me, tell me. Like, I still can't find my true love. Oh, and cannot find your true love. Yes. Close your baby. Well, you know what? Just stay and wait for the next session. Because in the next session, people will tell you how to understand the mind of the opposite sex. And they will also tell you how to find a boyfriend easily. And also, they'll teach you. And also, they'll teach you how to keep a doctor away by even just a drop of essential oil. And more, they'll teach you how to keep your body fit with some key health issues. And last, they'll teach you how to pose perfectly in your picture. So I believe you will find your true love. Wow, it sounds awesome. I can't wait. But so let's have a 15 minute break before the next session starts. So please be seated at 7.45 and we will have the next session. Thank you. So see you later.